You are now watching a Lucky Penny Shop product feature. Hey, it's Lucky Penny Shop. Excited to check out a vintage item called the Junior Planetarium. Now, I showed this in a previous video a couple times, actually. I think it was in a bin day. And then I also uh, showed it in a what's on the racks to my left part of a video that I did recently. I put it on the end and then one way back when on an Easter video. Yeah, believe it or not. So it's time to go through those items, get them out on video, and then bring new items into this area here. Now this says, it brings outer space into your home. Projects over 80 constellations as seen from any geographical location in the Northern Hemisphere. Operates on two D cell batteries. Pointer operates from planetarium current instructions with star charts included. Now the box... Has a very neat picture on the side. Kind of see the stars. And he's holding a little pointer in his hand with an arrow so you can point out the different constellations. Now, I don't know how this is going to work. I kind of have limited space here. The rest of the box just looks like a plain old, dirty, corrugated cardboard box. Ooh, that side has a picture. Same picture, same information. Pretty neat outer space picture. There's something here on the side. Maybe it was a shipping label, but it's taped over. I don't know the year yet, so let me do this. Let me uh, reposition my camera. We'll get this out of the box and we will check it out. Okay, so let's check this item out. Here are the instructions. And they have these little bonus sheets. We'll see what those say. And then to get this out, I need to do that. And then slide it out. Okay. There it is. Now, good packaging because this is like a plastic that can bend, so you have to be pretty careful. And oh, here's a little pointer. All right, so there it is. Pretty cool. All right, so let's just get those instructions out. Let's bring the camera way down here. Just so that we can take a quick look at that before we start. All right, so here we go. Special instructions. Everything's out of the way now. It says, free the horizon. Huh. Inside the round projection sphere of the planetarium is a device which serves to cut off a portion of light so as to provide an artificial horizon. This device has been tied down to prevent damage during shipment. Before your unit can operate properly, you must first release the vise by removing a rubber band which prevents its motion. Oh, and that rubber band is inside the box, so obviously uh, it's already been done. To do this, you must remove the projection sphere by following these simple steps. Place the instrument on table or other flat surface. Be sure the sphere is straight up or set on the number 90 latitude setting. Now notice that there are three knurled aluminum screws on the month flange located at the bottom of the projector sphere. Completely remove these screws by turning counterclockwise. Now very carefully lift the entire projection sphere and you will find that it can be completely removed thereby exposing the horizon cutoff device. Remove the rubber band. If you care to, if you care to, this can be cut with a pair of scissors. However, be be very careful not to cut the black wire or the tape holding the wire in place. Yes, that would be crucial. At the removal of the rubber band, check for free movement of horizon cutoff by tilting the entire unit, also check to see if the bulb has become loose during shipment and wipe any fingerprints from the bulb with clean cloth. This is very important where planetarium is concerned because any finger smears on the bulb can result in distortion of the star images. Wow. Now replace the projection sphere by reversing the directions you followed for removal. You'll notice on the date plans there are two locating lugs on each of a different si on each of a different size. These must correspond with the two different size holes around the bottom of the sphere or else the unit cannot be assembled. So it only goes on one way. This is done to ensure proper line of the month flange. Replace screws and tighten firmly with thumb and forefinger. Do not use pliers or tools by turning knurled screws clockwise. Okay, the bulb replacement, latitude operation, care of your sphere, and remember, for the most realistic effect, you should have complete darkness. Be sure to read carefully the directions on darkening your room as outlined in the beginning of your instructor's book. This is very important. All right. Please note, the instruction book is being temporarily substituted for the one normally used with the Nova Junior Planetarium. It is the same 
except for the illustration of the planetarium and for the description of the type of bulb to be used. All right, so I guess there were some issues. I guess this is what they're bottling this after. We'll take a closer look. The Nova 3 automatic program planetarium. Oh, that's the, the really cool one, the Nova 3, for schools and colleges. And it looks like it's wood and really cool looking. All right, instructions. Oh, there it is. How to use, have fun with, and learn from the Nova Home Planetarium. Even this one looks a lot cooler than the one that came out of this box. What about a year? I haven't seen a year yet. You always think they should put a year on something like this. Okay, so one side shows all the different constellations. So if you're into this, you might like this. It says Nova Planetariums. Looking for north in autumn, looking south in summer, looking for north in summer, looking south in spring, looking north in spring, looking south in winter, looking north in winter, and then back to looking south in autumn. I have no idea what all this means, uh, but it's got little half moons, I would call them, in a very nice blue, and then all the different constellations are in, you know, with little circles and lines and stars. Okay, I don't know much about this, so we'll just see if we can learn a little bit anyway. If, in the least, I can at least show you how it works, then you can go do all the technical stuff if you ever find one of these. All right, so there is to youngsters, youngsters of the space age. Yeah, that's me. You are living in the most exciting time in history. Growing up in a world of wonderful discoveries, Already men have set satellites spinning in orbits around our Earth and sent rockets to heights far beyond our atmosphere. Soon, perhaps, sooner than we think, human beings will travel the great distances to the moon. Ooh, so we know this must be from the 50s. To other planets in our solar system, even to far stars and other galaxies, perhaps you will go along on one of these fabulous voyages. Meanwhile, studying space geography with your Nova Home Planetarium is a fine way to prepare yourself for the exciting time to come. You can, what is it? it says, you can, and where does it go? You can, you can. I don't see where it starts. You go before you begin. You can, oh, maybe you can, before you begin, read this special, read these special, getting your planetary menu for use. No, I don't know. I'm not sure. Let's see what the other three panels have. Oh, right here. So here, it flips all the way around. That's not fair. You can get to know the names of stars and... Oh, there's number two. And their changing positions. Become familiar with the panels, uh, planets and constellations. All you need is a dark place to set up your planetarium and enough imagination to pretend that you are sailing through space. Learn to, re learn to recognize the stars indoors with your planetarium. Then when you go outside on a clear night, the sky will be as familiar to you as the ceiling of your living room. Remember, someday the stars may be as close to you as your planetarium makes them seem now. Makes them seem. And now. Okay. Well, my reading is not on today. So you've got that whole section of panels. And you flip it around a third time. And you got this whole section of panels. And they're numbered. Which I did not notice initially. So you have panel 5, 6, and 7. Panel 5, what are the stars? Start with the dipper. Finding north. Finding yourself with your own planetarium. And then number 7 is look for the southern cross. If you know any of the stars, you'll know the Big Dipper. Okay, where do we... Okay, instructions. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's get batteries. Let's take a look at the unit. We'll get that part of it figured out before we turn it on. Because I'm not sure how I'm going to actually show this in this limited space I have. And it needs to be in the dark room. Maybe I can build something real quick. All right, so this stands uh, 14 inches tall. I measured it. And uh, the ball itself... Ooh, what do you think? It's smaller than a bowling ball, so it's probably about six inches across, maybe. And it's a black sphere, and it's got little holes, which are really hard to see. Now, what happened was the top was dented, so what I did was I took some hot water. I first popped it out, but it still did not take its shape. So I took it uh, to some hot water in a bowl, and I laid it in there, and I was able to press it back out and reshape it. So the base kind of has like an Art Deco look to it. And uh, there's two switches, one in the front and one on the side. And the one on the side controls this. This is a little pointer. I believe there's a bulb in there. I don't know. 
and then it shines out and you could point to the different constellations and then they were talking about the side panel put it at 90 when you were taking off the rubber band but if you just click this you can turn the sphere and there's the bottom by the way you can see the three little uh knurled knobs they call them and then the different months are down there and there's somewhere uh let's see oh there's january and then february so it only goes on one way but i don't think the whole thing turns i don't know i didn't get that part of it it does so you can turn the month around all right we're learning and then batteries go down here so let's see let me get those let me get that set up We'll see if it turns on, and well, I'll tell you what, let me do that, let me put the batteries in, we'll take this apart so you can see inside, and then we'll turn it. All right, so you may have noticed I switched to a long sleeve. I don't do that often, but uh, in the beginning of the video, I was reading and I was felt like I was nasally and sniffly, and I thought, all right, let me warm up a little bit, so. Here we go, here we go. So it does say, this battery up, this battery down. So they give you a little pictorial there. Well, this should just come out, there we go. So one up and one down. It is a, uh, you know, like a cheaper plastic, I must say. So I'm being cautious here not to damage anything. But the way this goes in, it's a little, little goofy. Of course, I would have never designed it that way, right? Okay, there we go. Okay, so now let's just do this. Let's get this ball off so you can see inside. Now, I assumed that the rubber band in the box was the rubber band, but let's see, maybe it's not. Not even paying attention. Like I said, I've had this apart, not even noticing anything, not knowing what's going on, and then... And there it is. There is the rubber band. So this has probably never been used, or they use it and they put the rubber band back. Rubber band back, rubber band back. So let's get this out of the way. Okay, so this is like a little, like a pendulum. So as you turn this down, that changes direction. So that's how the whole constellation thing works, I guess. My batteries in, let's turn it on. Okay, lights on. Let's clean the bulb. Just in case, it's been in there for a very long time. Any smudge will make a difference. Hard to get in and out actually. Okay, I think that's good. Okay, and then this does this turn on? Ah, so there is a light in there. Can you see it? Okay, and that makes a pointer. Alright, now they did say the year, the months, the months are there, yeah, it's all there. And it only goes on one way. So these two little pins right there line up. But it looks like it can go on either direction. Not sure what they mean by that because let's just see. Let's get it on this way. All right. And then that lines up there and there. Now, does it do it this way too? Yeah. Not as good though. So let's just assume it has to be this way. That's much better. Now I missed the hole. I had it and then I lost it. Right, maybe I'm missing the holes all together. Okay, there they are. Ah, okay. We have a connection. Okay, all right, no, so it does have to go. It only goes this way, I guess. Let's see. No. Let's try it this way. No. Oh, wait, that just sat right in. Okay. So it's hard to find the... The spot. There should be a little mark here and a little mark there, and then you know every time exactly where it goes. 
Again, that's just me. I didn't design it. Okay. And the last one. Uh, I think I should just turn off some lights and we should just see what it does, right? Let's do that next. Let's see how it lights up and then we'll come back and check out those instructions. All right, so you're looking at the actual ball. You can see my hand. This is the ball. And then the back wall are the stars. Ooh, let's check out the little pointers so I can act like a professional. Here we go. Let me bring this around. And now I will point. I don't know. Can you see the point? There it is. This is the Big Dipper. I don't know. We're going to see if we can at least tune in at least one constellation. But now this is showing in all directions. The ceiling, the walls. So pretend like you're sitting in the middle of a field. In every direction you look up, there's stars. And that's what you're getting. That's that star right there. Check that star out. All right, so we know it works. Now if we angle the ball, let's do that. Okay, so look, so it's pretty cool. So it's kind of like you're looking over the sky as the sky passes as the earth spins. All right, so this, this right here is the constellation one, two, three, four. That is the one side of a four-sided die. Can you look at that? We're gonna call that the die constellation right there. One, two, three, four. No, just kidding. Maybe that is the Big Dipper, I don't know. All right, so I need to figure out now how to line this up. But let me bring you right into the the ball itself, see? I don't know how the camera's picking it up. My hand's going over it right now. Ooh, my camera's falling over. Let's see if you can see the star, the, the little doohickey just on the ball. All right, so you can't actually, oh, the cap fell off. All right, there it is. Yeah, you can't see it. You can see in it now, look at that. So that's the pointer. Very interesting. All right, let's see if we can line it up in some way. I'm not sure. Not my specialty, and you probably have to spend quite a bit of time with this. Let's see, even like these three little holes right here are really close together. So those three stars are always out in that position, right? Okay, here's straight on to the top. Here's the top. You got the, they're all different sizes too. Like this one is the biggest, the biggest hole. And you got little ones depending on the distance, right? All right, I'll be back. Okay, so we're getting a little closer here. I'll bring it down the way I think that was underneath it. So we read, well, we looked at one. You're living in the most exciting time in history. We read that and that went to two. We kind of went, this is just giving you all the information you need to uh set it up and get it ready we did that and then you come to two i believe we finished reading that and then be careful clean your base replace your bulb how to change latitude so that's kind of where we're at we're really learning here okay so when you set up here you want to put in the center of the room okay put your planetarium on a desk or on a dining room table or maybe a card table it might help although it's not necessary to put a couple of telephone books or a box or whatever you use that the planetarium may be placed a little higher there's an automatic arrangement inside the planetarium to keep the stars from shining in the eyes of people who are sitting, okay? So sitting down to get set. When, you're, when you sit in front of your planet, planetarium facing the control panel, okay, so I'd sit in front of this, and there's my, my control panel, one on-off switch. Sounds so exciting, but the picture there shows a real con control panel. You are facing north, your back is south, the east is on your right, and the left of you is west. Think this out carefully so you'll always remember which direction is which. The first thing to do is to set the planetarium for the proper latitude. Latitude is the distance north or south of the equator. Here's a map which will give you a pretty close idea of the latitude where you live. So that's down here. So Illinois is somewhere between 40 and 60, right? Because that is Lake Michigan. So I would need to set this between 40 and 60. So we're gonna go to 50. All right, so that's set to about 50. Yeah, I'm bring it down in there so you can kinda see, all right? And then we wanna face it north, okay? 
and turn it on. Oh, it is on. It's on. Okay. And then you should set the axis of your planetarium if your lad did that. When the room is dark and the stars are trying to look for look toward the east, which is to your right. Turn the little disc where the axis joins the star sphere to the left in a counterclockwise direction. This will make the stars rise in the east and set in the west. Okay, so I do need to Okay, this shows the stars. Well, you can read all that. There's quite a bit there. I think I've overread it. All right, whatever. Okay, so I have read you most of panel one. This kind of just goes over getting ready to use, which I did all remove the rubber band, kind of some repeat information here. And then the panel two, I read that. And then be careful with your sphere, clean your base, replacing your bulb, how to change latitudes, which we are on now. See picture. So that's panel three. So we are in, well, I'm in Illinois, so I'm kind of like in between 40 and 50. 50, 40 and 60, so probably closer to the way they stretch this little map out here. You can look at it. The Little Lake Michigan area is not that shape. It's longer, so I'm going to say closer to 50. So let's get that set. I need to turn this to 50. Okay. Now this is north. It said, well, somewhere it said, let's see. Let's just... Read this a little more. Okay. When you sit in front of your planetarium, so if I'm sitting where the camera is, okay, facing the control panel, which is this, uh, nice control panel, and then uh, you are facing north. So I am looking north. Your back is to the south, the east is on your right, and the uh, left is the west. Okay. Think this out carefully so you'll always remember which direction is which. Now I know the camera is always facing that way, so that is going to be my north. The first thing to do is set the planetarium for the proper latitude, which I did by looking at the map. Uh, is the distance north okay? We did all that. It says, oh, very careful here. You could uh, look for this information up on a large map or ask your local weather bureau or your science teacher what your latitude is. Or you could just Google it, which they didn't have back then, right? You should set the axes of your planetarium for your latitude, reading the angle from the scale and the instrument is located along the curved dome, which we did, okay. And then I will need to set the month, right? I'm not sure. It doesn't say. When the room is dark and the stars are turned on, look toward the east, which is to your right. Turn the little disc where the axis joins, joins the star sphere to the left in a counterclockwise direction. This will make the stars rise in the east and set in the west. Okay. Turn a little disc. Where's the little disc? It says, wait a minute, let's read this again. When the room is dark and the stars are turned on, look toward the east, which is to your right. Turn the little disc where the axis joins the star sphere. Oh, this must be the little disc up here. I think that's what they're saying, this little disc. So this would be rising in the east and setting in the west. That makes sense. Maybe I could put, like, cardboard there or something. To show the stars for the evening any month in the year, turn the little disc until the proper month is reading upright in front of you. So we want January. It's right there. Okay. Now, let's see. Mm, so, okay, this shows the stars they would appear at about 9 p.m. at the time of year. Okay. To advance farther into the night, turn the entire sphere, in, entire sphere into a clockwise direction. And remember that each month division is the equivalent of two hours. In other words, suppose you want the stars to appear as they would at midnight. So then you're going to go to uh, at midnight, okay? Of any given month, first set the month indication of the month you wish to show upright, let us say, for example, October. Now by turning the clock sphere until November is upright, we gain two hours and from 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock and further advance of the setting halfway between November and December will represent about one hour of time, therefore giving you the desired setting of 12. That makes sense. So make it dark and keep it dark. So they give you all the ways to do that. Panel 5. Yes, these are this is not simple. Not a simple item. What are the stars? Okay, start with the Dipper. If you know any stars at all, you'll know the Big Dipper. If you don't know any stars, the Big Dipper is the first group to learn. You can find it easily. It is visible every clear night to people who live in North America, Europe, and Asia. As it changes its position in the evening skies, it indicates the seasons. It can be used to find many other star groups in the sky. Dube, Murak, Fecta, Megrez, Elsiath, Mizar, and Olcade. Or okay, those are the names of the seven points. Now we can do something we couldn't do just a few minutes ago. Talk about the stars by name. Okay, so those are all the names of the stars. Dubé, 
Look very carefully at Mizar. Do you see a tiny little star above? Okay, so finding north with the dipper. Turn on your own planetarium. Look at Dubé and Merrick. Draw an image line from Merrick through Dubé. This line points to a second magnitude. Okay. Finding yourself with your own planetarium. So that's if you're outside. Uh, oh, here. Remember this now. Above all, remember, looking at the real sky is the best way to learn the stars. So go outdoors whenever you can and see how easy it is to find the stars in the real sky after having learned them. Learn them with the help of your own planetarium. Each night you'll learn some more things until you'll feel at home whenever you look at the sky from any part of the world. That's when you really understand how wonderful it is to recognize these stars, which are so universal and everlasting. So using the star charts, they don't give you much information here. When you open this folder, you'll find a set of charts showing how the stars look at different seasons of the year. You can bring this beautiful sky map on your wall. You can hang this beautiful sky map on your wall and use it to help you go places with your planetarium. All right. I don't know if I'll find the Big Dipper, but let's get some, uh, maybe get a couple big pieces of cardboard in here. I'll turn off the lights again, and we will uh, look at the stars together. Now it's facing north. I've got it on the right month. Maybe we can find the Big Dipper. Let's see. Okay, right now it's the glow from my phone, but it, ooh, let me, let me lighten that up again. Okay, so you see I've got something on the top, something on the side, something on the bottom. Not that this is the way to do it, but it's the only way I can really get a grip on this in some way. So what I see here, now this is just my eye, see? I don't know, this looks like a Big Dipper to me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But then this could look like the Big Dipper here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've always looked at the stars and really never been able to understand. Now, I have something up top, so if I bring this down, you'll see if that's the upper part of the sky. Not as much there in regards to stars. Some cool groupings, uh, but really, I'd have to take the camera off the tripod to get you right in there. But I think you can see, like, all the cool stars. You get them on the globe, too. So remember, there's going to be stars coming at me towards the wall and ceiling behind me, but I can't really show that. Now, it did say in the instructions, you can do it in a room with mirrors, with windows, just cover them up with thick uh, blankets. The mirrors, it said it should be fine because it's still dark in the room, so there's no reflection. I don't know. Maybe that's uh, maybe that's what I just remembered saying. So if I turn it this way, now reversed, so there's not as many stars behind me, and you can barely see them. There's the base. Oh, so there's not. There's a bunch on the top, but I think the whole thing... Is pretty cool. So now if I just turn it like they say, hold on, let's let this focus again. It's coming into focus. Yes, very nice. Now if I turn it, then it's rising and setting, right? So that's what the stars look like as they're turning around the night sky. There's a really interesting grouping right here. I don't know if you could see it. I'll zoom in. Well, let me get my little pointer out. Right here. Do you see that little grouping? You don't see my pointer. Right? Oh, you see my pointer. It's just not very clear. There's like six little stars right there. See that? What grouping is that? Alright, so someone who studies this could be like, oh yeah, I got this uh, here. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Do re me. That's exactly that, but I just don't have those skills. But I did show you how this works. So let me come back. I'll wrap it all up. Well, let me just take the camera off the tripod real quick so you can see what's on the top inside. So pretending like you're inside. I gotta pull some wires off of this. Let's take this one out. Okay. This is coming on. And then looking up, there's the sky. Let me turn the dome. And you can see the different stars up there. So you're turning, you're adjusting, you're setting for time. It's a pretty neat little item. All right, there you go. I think that's enough going out of focus, but I think you get the idea, so let me come right back. Well, uh, I didn't see the Big Dipper. Well, in my own mind, I made up my own Big Dipper because that's when I look at the sky, that's what happens. I never really can pinpoint things. I wish I had someone with me who was an expert and they could actually show you this in its expert way. 
show you all the different uh, star constellations and give you the knowledge. My knowledge is just learning the item itself, what it does, how it works, and uh, all the different pieces. Oh, by the way, the little on-off for this was on the side, so you were able to turn that on and off. Overall, hope you enjoyed the video. I had fun making it. Hope you learned something about it. Maybe you haven't missed the instructions and don't know what to do. Now you do. And as always, thanks for watching and supporting Lucky Penny Shop. Later! If you're looking for the item you just saw in the video, click here. Watch more videos by clicking here. Don't forget to share on social media and give a thumbs up. Hey, LPS Dave. What's up, Butch? Make sure they don't forget to subscribe. Oh, yeah. Please click here to subscribe to Lucky Penny Shop. And always remember when you see a lucky penny, pick it up.